Welcome back to the channel guys. Today's video is going to be something a little bit more fun. I've got two GTX 1080 Ti's I'm going to put in an overclocking showdown. So which one do you reckon is going to come out on top? So the two cards that are going to be featured in the video are the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X and the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti Aorus. Let's just have a quick look at them both. So here we've got the MSI GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X. It features 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, has a base clock of 1569 MHz and a boost clock of 1683. But that's not going to mean anything because of the way the Nvidia GPU Boost 3 works. It'll go way beyond that figure even right out of the box. It retails at around $1,239 Australian, and it has a pretty striking red and black aesthetic, which I really like, but I wish they'd release a matte black version. I reckon that'd look amazing, and I'm sure more people would buy it because it would suit more people's systems. It has their new Twin Froza 6 cooler with two of their Torx 2.0 fans, and I know from previous experience that this is one of the quietest and most effective coolers on any high-end graphics card. And this is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Aorus. Again, just like the MSI card, it features 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, but this card has a base clock of 1594 MHz and a boost clock of 1708, so just a bit higher than the Gaming X. But again, Nvidia GPU Boost 3 is going to push the card beyond those figures without any help from me. It retails around $1199 Australian, but it's worth noting here that you can pick up the Extreme Edition of this card for another $50, and that gets you a slightly higher OC out of the box, a much more attractive backplate, a 4 year warranty instead of 3, and it seems to be more desirable in the market. So given the choice, I'd grab the Extreme Edition. The Aorus has a very different design to the MSI card, having a triple overlapping fan design which they call the Wind Force Stack. It has a more neutral look, even though it does have touches of orange, and more prominent and better implemented RGB effects. Alright, so what's the plan? How are we going to do this? What I had in mind was to do three different tests. The first one, just take the cards out of the box, put them in the system, and see how they run. The second will be with Afterburner, I'm just going to remove the power limit and the temp limit, and let it run and see if the cards overclock themselves more. And the third will be actual manual overclocking to see how far I can push the cards. All right, now before I get into this, I've got a huge disclaimer, and that's gonna revolve around the silicon lottery. So we all know how that works with CPUs and graphics cards. No two cards are the same and they overclock and behave differently. So if you were to go out and buy either of these two cards, it's likely that your results will be different. Almost guaranteed they'll be different. So don't read too much into this. It's really just a bit of fun because having two 1080 Ti's at the moment, who wouldn't give them an overclocking battle? So let's get on with it. As far as the software goes, I'll be using MSI Afterburner to monitor the graphics cards and their behavior and also do the overclocking when we get to that point. Only because I think still at this point, Afterburner is the best overclocking software as far as ease of use and monitoring. As far as the actual programs, I'll be using Unigen Heaven, just looping it, and also the new Superposition benchmark. So that's enough of me talking, let's get into it. Oh, actually, before we do, I'm gonna pause it here just for a second to give you an opportunity to put in the comments below which card you think is gonna perform better and come out on top. All right, well, let's get on with it. We've got the MSI Gaming X in there, so let's start off with that. I'll do a Unigen loop, and I'll do Superposition, and we'll get an idea on how it's behaving straight out of the box. I'll be right back. All right, so we've had Unigen looping here just on the stock clocks with the Gaming X, and what I'm seeing is the boost clock seems to be fluctuating between 1873 and 1924. The max temperature is bouncing between 59 and 60 degrees, so it's pretty under control. But you can see that the core clock's a little bit unstable and sort of jumping up and down. So what I'll do now is I'll remove the power target and the temperature target and see how that affects it. So I'm back after making the change with the power target and the temp targets, 
Now, doing that didn't change too much at all. What it did do was it allowed the core clock to sit at 1924 solid and not fluctuate. So it must have been hitting the power target before and it's bouncing up and down. But with the uh, power target and temperature targets or temperature limit raised, it doesn't do that at all. So temperature still around 60 degrees, but the boost clock is 1924 solid. All right, so now the fun begins. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna begin manually overclocking the Gaming X to see if I can figure out where its maximum overclock is going to be. So I'll have a bit of a play around and I'll be right back. All right, so after a few loops of Unigen Heaven and Superposition, I think I've found the maximum that the Gaming S will go to. And that is 2038 on the core and 5900 on the memory. Any more than that and it half makes it through, but crashes. So I think that's the limit. So I think now is about the time to throw in the Aorus. I'll just chuck up the results, so the, the um, Superposition and Unigen Heaven loop results or benchmark results so that we can come back and compare them. And um, let's go ahead and throw the Aorus in and see how that goes. So we've got the Aorus in, it's ready to rock and roll. So let's start off just running a couple of loops of Unigen Heaven, just stock out of the box and see how it behaves. All right, so we're back with the out of the box results for the Aorus. Now, what I'm seeing here is this is, um, behaving a little differently to the Gaming X. The core clock on this one fluctuated between 1911 and an even 2000 megahertz, which is a fair way above what the Gaming X was doing. That topped out around 1924. So, but I am noticing that fluctuating more than the Gaming X did. So it's going higher, but not being more stable there. Um, but again, this is just um, out of the box and that's GPU Boost 3 doing its thing all over the place. So let's remove the power limit and the temp limit and see if that gets it to be a little bit more stable. So what I noticed straight away as soon as I did that was the core clock went up to 1987 and just sat there. And it's continuing to sit there. So it looks like um, by adjusting the temp limit and the power limit on the Aorus seemed to um, get all this under control and it's just locked at 1987. So um, I'll let it run for a little bit more and I'll check back in. Okay, so after about 15 minutes of looping Unigen, what I'm seeing is that the core clock on the Aorus has still stayed solid at 1987. The temperatures have gone up a fair bit though, which is interesting. They've gone up from out of the box, it was doing 59, 60 degrees, much like the MSI was, but now it's 67, 68 degrees, so it added you know, nearly 10 degrees um, just by removing the temp limit and power limit and letting it stretch its legs a bit more. So that was interesting. So what I'll do now is I'll do a bit of manual overclocking, see how far I can push it. And again, I'll check back in with you guys in a second. So after three passes of the Unigen Heaven benchmark and three passes of Superposition, I think I found the maximum overclock on the Aorus. And that ended up being 2012 megahertz on the core and 5900 megahertz on the memory. I couldn't push it any further without it crashing partway through a, uh, a benchmark or artifacting. So at the end of the day, that ended up being 26 megahertz on the core slower than the MSI, but also the temperatures were different on this. The temperatures here hit 76, 77 degrees, whereas the uh, MSI card really stuck around 60, 61. So that's a pretty significant difference. It's also worth mentioning that the overclocking was carried out with the voltage left stock on both cards. I didn't modify or change that or put any extra voltage through to try and maintain a higher overclock or anything. I just wanted to leave it uh, self-managed by the card. So if I had have upped the voltage, perhaps a higher overclock may have been achieved on both cards, but I don't think that would have made the difference. I don't think that would have made the Aorus card leapfrog the MSI just by giving it a little bit more voltage. I think perhaps both overclocks would have um, risen in relativity with each other, but I don't think it would have changed the results drastically. I guess in wrapping this up, if you picked um, 
the MSI as the performer. I guess we'd have to crown that as the winner after the results here. I did manage to maintain a slightly higher overclock and I'll put up the results, the benchmarks as well, in case you guys want to have a bit of a look. And if you like this video, give it a bit of a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'm very, very close to 2,000 subs now, and I'd love to get there sooner rather than later. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.